Okay, welcome everyone. Can you hear me? Good evening. Welcome, Brian. Welcome, Christina. We're going to get started here. Thank you for coming in. We'll see if anybody else pops in here. This is the last live lecture. Thank you guys for being so flexible with me. I figured this is probably the best way to go about it, being that it's going to be 4th of July tomorrow. So I just put my little one to bed. Hopefully she stays quiet. <laughs> Welcome to week four, live lecture two. How are you guys doing tonight? I'm good, how about yourself? Doing good, doing good. Just a long day, just ready for the weekend. And I'm sure you guys are too. <laughs> okay, good. Found the mock-ups. I actually have a couple who downloaded some folders that I'm gonna share with you guys too, if you would like to use them. Okay. Yeah, we'll talk about that. I thought this was pretty fitting, seeing that there's coffee here, because, you know, we need to get that extra push for the week, for the finals week. So make sure you're drinking lots of coffee. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we'll go over that for sure. So um, the last time that we met up was yesterday. And we, we kind of slow recap here. We looked at some student examples from assignment three, and then we just took, to, took a look at a video about creating a brand identity because you guys are going to be doing that for the assessment for this week. We also just kind of um, went through the steps for your assignment four. So if you missed yesterday's lecture, definitely review that. I did a step-by-step -step uh, review of how I would approach the project um, so that it would clarify anything that you had questions upon. It's basically pretty much what we did in week two with like two other extra pages. <laughs> All right, so pretty much what we're going to go over today is assessment four, and then we'll just kind of open it up to you guys if you have anything you want to talk about, ask questions about, or even take a look at for extra feedback. All right, so let's go ahead and I'm going to take a look at the assessment project in campus so we can take a look at what we're dealing with here. Um, and we kind of reviewed this yesterday very quickly. Um, you can read through the background. I won't bore you with reading all of that, but I am going to go to the prompt. So it's basically just talking about the variety of formats, um, delivery of your um, identity, whether it be business card, stationery, website, placing it onto these identity um, pieces so that's consistent is key. Prompt, so for this final assessment, you will be implementing your logo on the following three personal elements. So you're gonna have a business card where you will have your logo, phone number, web address, email address, and mailing address. Um, you know, if you're, if you wanna put your home address on there, you can, and your actual information, that's fine. If you wanna use fake information, that's fine. Um, you know, it's completely up to you. You'll leave that up to you. Letterhead, logo, phone number, web address, email address, mailing address, and envelope is logo and return address. You're going to use your color scheme and established type system to ensure that you have a cohesive look and feel through all elements. Design your pieces first as flat files and then use Photoshop to mock them up in a 3D context. When you're finished, you'll need to submit both your flat files and your mocked up files. Be sure to keep these, <coughs> be sure to keep things learned in print production in mind when creating these pieces. So you're gonna use your CMYK callouts, add correct bleeds, but don't use a bleed on the envelope, nor, nor put any graphics that want to interfere where the address or postal requirements are needed. So stamp and barcodes. When, you're, when you have completed all parts of the assignment, save your work as a multi-page PDF or PDFs, and it should be one PDF with the following name, and it should be the assessment for first last name. Submit your finished logo again to your Behance portfolio site and email a link to your FBA and CC your instructor. All right, um, there's a note here. I'm just gonna kind of read through this too. It says you'll be using the logo you are creating in this course for yourself as a designer 
on various self-promotional pieces as well as your portfolio website and resume. So make sure you keep the original and as you move through the program, continue to tweak it as you learn more design theory so it will be the best it can be when, re when you reach your final courses before graduating. Okay? Any questions about that so far? I see some other people just popped in here. Welcome, welcome. Tabra, Lanita, welcome. All right, this is worth 35 points. So, you know, it's definitely, um, it all adds up. So make sure you're, you know, submitting this for your final, with your final project. Okay, do you remember? Yeah, okay, so there's no actual sizes for these, right? So do you remember that link that I gave you guys? Um, here. Oops, not that link. Okay. So I gave you this toolbox link, which is really, really uh, a very helpful link to um, bookmark. And you can go to your envelope sizes, say if you want to figure out what the commercial envelope sizes are. You can go in here and get your sizes. Now the common size for a business envelope is this one here, so number 10. Okay, so you would look at these uh, width and height. So about nine and a half by four and one eighth. All right, so glad that you're here, yeah. <laughs> now you guys can have off tomorrow. <laughs> So anyway, this, this website definitely is coming in handy already because that, that is, and it doesn't tell you here, but that's the standard um, business card size. No, I, I'm sorry, envelope size. Now, there are other sizes just like there are other sizes of business cards. Typical business card is, if you were to go back to that um, same website here, my, um, Bar is in the way here. Give me one second. Okay, there we go. Business card sizes, you can click on that. And you would go to the United States, and you could see here that the regular, like the general size, is about three and a half inches wide by two high. And then later heads about eight and a half by eleven. If that's I don't think that's even in here, but um, you know you don't necessarily have to stick to a general um, business card size. There's so many different um, different sizes, but you have to choose one that's appropriate for your brand. Now, with that being said, you also have to think about what the mock-up's going to look like because if the PSD mock-up has a particular size, say it's probably going to be a standard three and a half by two size business card you're gonna to wanna to stick to that size, okay? Just because it'll just, I would say, not translate well. All right, so there's no sizes in here, but I kinda of gave you some, some tips. All right, so what I would probably do, there's two ways that you can do this. Okay, yeah, there you go. Print production on, okay, good. I would get into the habit, and let me open up InDesign here, hold on one second. Of, now I'm just creating a new document in InDesign, and I know you, got, you can't see this right now, so I'm gonna share my screen here. So I just went to InDesign, like I said, create new. I'm going to do just a regular eight and a half by 11. Um, this is for the business, or I'm sorry, the letterhead. So I'm going to start with the letterhead and um, I'm going to make this in, in design. Now you can do it in Illustrator, but it's always good to kind of get in the habit of laying um, flat files like this in InDesign because it's always better. It's, it's easier to lay out copy, you know, align things in, in, uh, situate your elements on a layout in InDesign. Now in InDesign, um, in the presets here, you wanna set up your blades. Mine are already set. My margins are set. Eight and a half by 11, we're good. So I'm gonna hit create. I'm probably gonna lose you here. Hold on one second. I don't know why it does that. No. Okay, 
gotprint.com. Okay, thank you. That's awesome. All right, so this would be my letterhead. So I'm gonna go ahead and save this as my letterhead. So BES232, and I'm just gonna name this letterhead. My first and last name. And I'm gonna save this just on my desktop for now, and I'll kind of put it all in a folder. All right, then I'm gonna create a new document the size of my business card. So a new, completely new one. And this one was three and a half, right? Three and a half by two. Now it all depends if you wanna do a vertical or horizontal as well, but you may wanna look at your mock-ups to see which one you wanna do. Some may be vertical orientation and some may be um, horizontal. But in any case, I'm gonna reset my margins here, sorry guys. Um, this is the, I'm gonna just reset these so they're smaller, whoops. Not so wide margins, so maybe let's do this one, that looks good. Okay, so this is my business card. Now your mock-up may have a front and a back, so that's something that you'll wanna check out too when you present it. So if that's the case, you know, you would just have two pages in here instead of one. I'm gonna name this business card. First and last name. Desktop. So you're gonna create, you know, two separate files here. Then you're gonna do one more, file new, and you're gonna do the envelope for this one. Okay. Pretty simple, pretty easy. So this one we're gonna do, what did it, what did it say, nine and a half by, geez, I even forgot. Sorry guys, it's been a long day. <laughs> Envelope size is number 10. I think it's nine and a half by, oh, I was wrong, nine and, 9.25, oh no, I was right, nine and a half by four and one eighth. Oops, somebody's probably typing in there here. Four and one eighth. Everything else looks good. I could probably bring in my margins at this point. Oops, we'll just keep it. Let's see what that looks like. Somebody was typing in. I didn't get to see what you typed here. So hold on one second. Yep. Okay. So yeah, nine and a half by four and one eighth. So 4.125. So I'm going to save this as DES 2.5 business envelope. Or you could just save envelope. That's fine. First and last name. Now I have three separate InDesign templates for my stationery. Any questions about that? No? Okay. Now, the next thing is, how do you want to show, I would probably start either with the business card and then go to your letterhead and then go to your envelope. It doesn't matter which one. I, I would say start with the business card because it's smaller, but it's completely up to you, when you how you want to start. Um, always think about consistency, but showing it in a way that's visually interesting too. All right, now how do we want to show our card? You know, maybe there is a back to this that we want to be more bold and the front is not as, contrasted. We're just going to start out with standard front here and I'm going to take my rectangle frame tool and I'm just going to go ahead and draw a box and do command D and do you remember the last time we met up we, we kind of saved those ping files out. Um, those ping files were the um, we kind of saved those out for your presentation and then we apply Im imported them into your layout. So we're going to take those same ping files and we're going to place whichever um, logo that you want to place in there. 
Yep. Mm -hmm. So I just placed my color one and I'm going to go to fitting and fill frame proportionally. You got it. So, um, and then I'm just going to go ahead and take the type tool and put in my name. And the information that needs to be in there is phone number, web address, mailing address. Okay, so I'm just going to type it in here. Okay. I don't know, I'm just gonna make that up. If you don't have a, a web address, go ahead and make that up. Okay. Now, I would keep this consistent. So whatever typeface that you use, if it is readable, if it's a script font, obviously you shouldn't use it for your body copy. Because why? Because it's gonna be hard to read, right? So um, use something, if that's the case, if you don't have a font that's readable, use something that is complementative of your logo. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and actually open up my demo here. My demo file. Just give me one second. I don't know where it is. Where did I put it? I thought I just saw it here. An assessment. Oh, here, right here. My project. Okay. Um, it's like nested in all these folders. So I'm going to open this up here. I'm just talking to myself. <laughs> All right. So go ahead, open up your Illustrator file. Go ahead, take a look at your logo. I used, um, I can't even remember what I used. B Boss, new, and News Gothic. News Gothic, okay. So I could use probably either or here, or even both. But I'm gonna keep it consistent. So I'm going to use um, either both or just one of them. Actually, it doesn't look too bad. And typically on a business card, you want to stay around 9, 10 point size. I know that sounds small, but you are holding this close to your face. It's kind of like not a billboard, right? So <laughs> there you go. So it can be a little smaller. I actually prefer it to be a little smaller. And this font is actually pretty big in size. Um, they're for the letter forms, so I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. So th this is actually eight point right here. Um, I would probably, and this is completely up to you. Studio, I'd probably put my name here, and then April Fist Design Studio. Actually, I wouldn't even put that. Maybe just put, you know, graphic designer or even whatever you kind of want to do. I could even put like CEO. Oh, sorry guys. Thank you. I do that. I'm in the moment. <laughs> I'm like, la, 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 la. All right. <laughs> I'm doing my thing. All right, guys, thank you for letting me know. I, I don't want to be talking to my, you know, talking and you guys not seeing what I'm doing here. Okay, so what I just showed was just typing my first name and last name out and then, you know, putting a title of some sort. And then this is where my contact information is. Now you could break this up too. I'm gonna shift this. If you want to, you could kind of break it up like this where the address is below. You have two spaces in between. And then, let me pull over my box so I can see here. You know, maybe this is where I'll put um, B Boss, that other font that I use, into play and get this a little bit bigger. And it's okay if the name's a little bit bigger and you maybe have a different play on your type here because these are, this is, um, you know, you're setting up your hierarchy here. So you want to kind of see this first. You want the emphasis, whether it be bigger or bolder. 
maybe a different color. You want to see that emphasis kind of um, pop out so that people see, okay, this is the first thing and then down here. And you can even, you know, highlight or make, you know, one of your contact informations if you think it's more important, more bold than others too. Um, just make sure you spell out the city. Um, I could probably spell out PX. I'm going to leave that because Pennsylvania is really long. And then, this actually looks really big, but I think it's because my logo is so small. I'm going to align this to where I think it would look best. But before I even do that, I'm going to change this to be color cohesive. So I'm just gonna take my type tool, select that font and change it to the color that's in my actual um, logo. Same thing here, maybe make this all kind of gray. So now it's, it's nothing kind of stands out, kind of goes together. Let me hide my lines here real quick. Okay, now the only thing I can say now is my logo is a little bit small, so I'm gonna double click on this. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. So I'm going to go ahead and see here. Size this a little bit bigger here. I think that's pretty good. You don't want it to be too big. Um, you want enough white space to frame it, but you don't want it too small. You know, you kind of want a good balance between everything. Okay, the next thing is kind of balancing your information. So, you know, if I were to design this, there's different ways that you can do this um, horizontally. So I'm going to show you some things here. Can we add other things than what the assignment? Yeah, mm -hmm. like if you have a textured background, but I would keep it consistent to your brand, if it makes sense. So I am going to make, let's see here, what's half? Pull kind of a line down here to show half of, of where half is, so I know that you know everything is kind of aligned here. So let me pull this down and bump it down a little bit. And then this copy, I'm gonna bump this down a little bit so that it's centered on my page as well. The next thing that you can do is you can keep it left justified, or you can even do a right justified. And then in that regards, you can kind of keep the same margin space here as you do over here. Now I would definitely have to bump this over a little bit to match that. Um, let me see here. This is about, let's do this locked. No. Let's do about right there. It's about a oh, one eighth. Okay, let's do that over here. Okay, and then what you can do is set up your margins a little different on the left. Oops, don't do that. Undo the link before you do anything. If you wanna just do the right, oh. and why is my stuff going in and out? That's really weird, we're gonna cancel this here. That's really strange. Hold on one second. Margins and columns. Oh, that's really weird. Oh, wait. I have to. Yeah, that's probably what it is. Okay. That's what it is. I had the adjust layout. So let's not do that. And let's pull this in. Un undo the link here. If you want to keep that top the same as the bottom, too. Yeah, right about there is good. Okay, and my top margin's all funky here. Hold on one second. And then I'm just gonna align my logo here and align my copy here. Top and my bottom are the different sizes. There we go. 
I can actually pull this in if I wanted to do the same 0.25 is fine because I'm not even really hitting upon that either. But I know that I'm aligning it to a grid. Okay, so it makes sense. And at this point, you know, maybe visually I can bump this over just to the right just a little bit because it is a heavier image. Um, you know, kind of balance this a little bit better, even though it's kind of, you know, right on that line as this was. Sometimes you can do that where it's kind of looking like a little bit off to the side too much um, because it is a darker image, it's heavier. So the balance is a little bit better when it goes to the right. Now you can do something like this where it's a little separator. I'm gonna do just like a little line here. And you don't have to do this, just a suggestion. Bring up your stroke palette if you wanna play around with the size, the width. Um, right now it's a gray color here that I have. And I'm gonna put it 0.25 It's usually a really good thin. You don't want it to be too thick because it'll get in the way of the information and that's the first thing you see and that's really not what you want. First thing that you wanna see, in fact, I'm actually gonna make this a little lighter in color. So I'm gonna bring up color here so that it just disappears a little bit more. We don't want it too, too, oh, this is an RGB Good to know here. I'm gonna change that in a sec. Okay, so go to color, swatches, and I'm gonna black, I'm gonna take it down to about, do like a, eh, let's do a 12 tint. Let's see what that looks like, there we go, perfect. Maybe, maybe a little darker, it's a little, that's a little light, I guess. But um, in, in any regards, it's something that you don't quite see right away. It's not the first thing you see, it's light, but it is a dividing part of your work. I can probably pull this to the left, or to the right a little bit. I'm seeing the space here and right here between these two, and I can even pull this to the right just a tiny bit and adjust this a little bit more. So that's one way you can do it. There's other ways too. Depending upon on your logo, it might be more horizontal too, so you might have some issues with placing it in this manner. Um, so you could do something where maybe the information and the, the logo goes maybe centered on top, and then the information is all down here. In this regards, I would definitely get this all in one line or two lines. We'll see how this works here. Delete the spaces out of here. This is the challenging part, but we can work here. See how many lines we can get it. That looks pretty good. All right. Um, and then I'm going to delete out the spaces in between. We can center this. How did you use change the background color? Okay, hold on one second. Just let you. What did I, how, okay. I don't know if I'm understanding your question here. How did I change the background color? Or how would I change it? Because I actually didn't change the background color. Make us a little smaller. Really, it's going to go that small. Let's do this. This would be the front of the card. I'm just showing you another orientation that you can try. Yep. For some reason, my um, percentage size thing isn't coming up on my preset, so I have to do it this way, which is kind of annoying. But, um, I don't know if I got that smaller. Getting it, you know, I need to get a little bit more white space in between here just because you don't want it to all read together. 
when it all reads together, it's hard, it's just harder to follow. Take this down a little bit here. There we go. So I put a little more white space in there. Oh, do you mean on the background here? Like when I went like this? That was um, okay. So in your toolbox over here, if you over down at the very bottom, you have uh, if you click and hold that click down at the bottom, there's a preview button. So you can see normal preview, which is all your bleeds and 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 margin guides. But if you hold the the preview down, you'll see no no lines. It'll go to a presentation view. Pretty cool. Pretty pretty cool. Kind of nice because it just gets and there's like a shortcut key for that too. Um, I forget what it is. You made the whole screen white in Illustrator, yeah. <laughs> Sometimes you can do that. It's like based on your preference settings as well. Like here's presentation. Oh, it just locked me out of here. Um, let me go back. So it's really kind of based on your settings too. Hold on one second, guys. I just lost you. Okay, okay. I just screwed myself up. Hold on one second. There we go. I was trying to show you the previews and I went into full screen and it kicked me out. <laughs> Oh, okay. Um, it's probably under your preferences under InDesign on the very top. Can you go to InDesign preferences? And you go to, I think it's under interface. Yeah, right here. So mine's set to color theme, like a darker gray, but if you set it to white, it's going to be all white. You see that? Yeah. So if you want all black, it's all preference. And, you know, sometimes people have a harder time seeing the very white it's like hard on the eyes so yeah that's a preference okay yep in the same way yep every program is very cross-platform like the same type of preference settings all right so i'm gonna did everybody get kind of how i did that you see how i balanced everything and there's more white space in between here and just make sure you have enough, you know, letting space that's not all crammed together. You're setting up your hierarchy. The logo's not too close to the title. I'm gonna go back to the other one because I actually like the horizontal other variation here. I'm like, off to the new here. But um, so those are just some tips if you wanna kind of play around with it. You don't have to do it in those two layout ways. You can do your own type of a thing. And I would really, you know, like, to have you guys experiment. Look online at other business cards, other graphic design business cards. Get an idea of what's out there. Be inspired. Okay. If I were to do, say, another page to this, so that maybe that's the back, because, you know, this would just be the front. Um, let's go ahead and make that, and I'll show you what I would do. So I'm going to just copy this same page. So I have two, this one and this one. Okay, but for this one, I would probably just, and, and there's ways that, there's different things that you can do. Okay, so say you wanted to do a backside and you have a lot of information here to place on the front. You can take, say, um, this information and put it on the back or, or even just, you know, so that you'll have more room on the front. So it'll just be this information and the rest of that information goes on the back. So I can even take my address. I wanna clear that out and I can put it just on my back. Now, I would suggest if you do that to make this a solid color, a contrasting color of, of some sort. So let me go back to normal here. So go ahead and draw your color or your texture or whatever you wanna do. And I'm gonna make this maybe a green. 
the only problem with this is, or let's see, maybe it won't be a problem. We need to obviously swap out the logo so that it works on this. And this is where all of those um, ping files that you created comes into play here. Um, the only problem with this one is you guys probably didn't create one that would work uh, on a, let's see, oh, maybe then a black and white. Okay. So what we're going to do, we have to go back to Illustrator. So this is what I'm showing you. If I were to place, let's see, where I'm go back to Illustrator, if you're going to do something like this. Where do all my stuff go? Okay, it's disappearing. All right, I'm going to take this logo here and I'm going to copy it and paste it on this. I mean, this is what you're going to have to do because you didn't set this up yet. And I'm just going to make this all white. So everything's selected, right? I'm going to make this all white. We didn't do this yet, so that's why I have to do this. So all white. And then this artboard is the only one I'm going to export out. So I'm going to go File, Save As, or Export, sorry, Export As. And I'm going to do White Logo. Hold on one second, so let me just ping. Use Artboards, and I'm going to do a range of two only. Transparent needs to be selected. Yeah, you know what? I probably, I'm not sure if I grabbed the right file or not. After you save the ping file, all white, go back to your InDesign file, place that file in there. I probably didn't. I'm going to put the white logo in there, and you'll see kind of the difference here. See what I'm saying? It works now. So what you could do for this idea, you could probably center this. So I'm going to go ahead and center my box. So that's on the left and the right trim line. Go fitting, center, so it's perfectly centered. Just bring this down a little bit. And then if you're gonna put your information somewhere, you know, I would probably put it down below and maybe on one line, keep it very simple. I would probably even make it smaller. But you don't need to put your copy here if it's working on the front. You know, it's just a suggestion if you want to free up your front too. You could just put your your um, website address on here too, on the back or the front. And you could even repeat stuff, but I wouldn't put all of the information repeated on this side. Just the important, say like a website address repeated. Okay, so where's my color? I'm like losing all my color swatches here. There we go. I'm gonna make this white and then I'm going to align this. All my alignment stuff is behind. I have boards behind boards. And um, here we go, center. Okay, so that is there. I don't think it's gonna work in gray, so I'm just gonna keep it in white here and just see what this looks like. I'm going to move this up just slightly so it kind of balances there. So that could be an example of what the back could look like. That's right. Thank you. See, you're my little inspirational motivator speaker <laughs> for me. All right, and then I would have to obviously like center this because I just took out the information there. You're my motivational speaker tonight, Christina. She's standing up for my goofiness tonight. There we go. So see how it kind of frees up some of the information? It's not so busy. So you could do something like that, okay? Um, just go ahead and check to see if your color settings are correct. There you go. <laughs> Um, I think the, um, when you save this out as a PDF, but you know what, it's probably not going to either. Yeah. I'm going to say you're in InDesign, it's different. 
Mm -hmm. So let's see, color settings. These are just your settings of your colors. I'll try to think of an easy way to do this. Because it's different in Illustrator here. Um, you're probably going to have to. Let me see something real quick. Yeah, you're probably. This is for print. So, um, whatever you had your Illustrator file that you placed this in from is going to be the color setting. So if you did it like a CMYK, it's going to come in as CMYK. Let me check this green here real quick. RGB. Okay, so we need to change that. So we need to change it to CMYK. So I'm going to bring up my color. Color, 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 color. Okay, so just bring up your color uh, palette in Illustrator. Just go to File or Window, Color. And just like you did in Illustrator, you're just going to click on the very top preset tab on the very top right and change it to CMYK. That's the only thing you have to do. Same thing here. Okay, and it just converts it. The only thing you don't have to do it to is the logo because whatever you saved it into uh, out of as Illustrator is what it will, the color space it'll be. Okay, any questions about the business card? Yep, you're welcome. Any questions about that? We're good to go, right? So the next thing would be the the, um, the letterhead. So once you kind of are finished with the, the business card, letterhead is okay. The letterhead is actually, it would go a lot smoother because you have all your elements. One thing to think about, you might want to make this more visually interesting by adding something different to this, something Say, you know, maybe just the mark, for instance, you want to make bigger and um, screen it back in the background. So I'll show you how to do that. And then you can use that as a consistent element throughout. So I'm going to go ahead and just copy my logo in InDesign. And I'm going to make this really, really big, actually, before I even do anything. Yep. Mm-hmm. Even bigger than that, like super, super big, like 500% big. If you can get it to be that big, yeah. And then I would just hide, and you could even go into Illustrator and just save out a different art or just the mark, you know, so that you can play around with it without the name. Go ahead, put it in the background. Let me guess a little bit bigger here. Oops. I don't want to do that either. Let me scale this a little different. I'm going to go ahead and go over to my scale. I'm going to make it 200. Yeah, there we go. Actually, let me do 150. Go back a little bit. All right, so then, and it's okay if it goes over stuff, it's fine, that's what I want. Go to object, send it back, arrange, send it back, and then we're gonna screen this. So go to your properties box over here. We're gonna give it an opacity, and typically things print light or darker. Remember what I was telling you about before? So you wanna kinda stick around probably no more than 15. I know it looks really light, but that is a good percentage because this will this will definitely print darker. And just get it to where the space looks visually interesting. Um, let me zoom in on here so you can see. See how that kind of altered that, you know, in a different way, makes it more visually interesting. Play around with it. See, you know, maybe it looks better up here. Maybe it looks better even over here. Yeah. This is where it's like, 
you really get to have fun with stuff. You know what I mean? Have fun with it. See what works. Play around with the space, um, how everything's presented. You might even want to put that little pyramid where your name is. Kind of use it to your advantage. And that way you don't even need this little line here. It's kind of visually, you like it on the right side? Me too. I do too. Something like this, I think. Looks, looks good. And then this becomes really neat because you can use this on all of your other materials. So for instance, yep, exactly. Like your letterhead, you can make this super big and use this for the background. Okay, so we're not sending it back right away, but let's pull this to the side for a second and um, letterhead. So there's different ways that you can do this too. I'm gonna go ahead and copy this information. And I still have my address that I need. There's different ways you could do this. You could have the logo at the top centered and all the information at the bottom. You could even have the logo over here with the information here. You could have it over here with the information here. You could have the logo down here with the information down here or above. So there's different ways that you can do this. Um, just have fun with it. I would say, you know, go ahead and look at other visual examples online um, to get inspired and see what works. Um, and um, what works for you, your personality of your brand. I would keep everything consistent. That's why I copied and pasted it here. As far as your type, I would keep it all pretty much the same. Maybe you could probably take, obviously take off your title. And then we have our address here. Go back and grab that one. So it's all white, so it's not gonna show. Um, you could either do it like this where it's stacked and then maybe make your phone number bigger. And I'm going to make this all a little bit bigger here because I think on the letterhead it's okay to get a little bit bigger. Just make sure if you do that, you're adjusting the letting so it's not too crammed. Um, typically it's a 20% space difference, but you can always do auto and then adjust from there too. You can make just, you know, the phone number bigger completely up to you and you can even make it so it's green and it pops out okay so or that doesn't look too bad you could put it all in one line so just going and putting two spaces maybe and doing like a divider in between so I'm doing a little bullet point space space option all eight is the little bullet point now that one turned out gray out to change that space space option eight and you can put tabs in there too, but I'm not really going to worry about that because I'm just going to do it easy here. Okay. Option eight. Actually, I don't even have to do that. I think that could go together. And then I'm going to take this down maybe 10 points and see if that works. There we go. Putting it on that very bottom line there so that it's very balanced. Exactly, well, you wanna make sure that you have cohesive elements. So I wouldn't go ahead and, I wouldn't do something like, um, you know, you saw the, what the business card looked like. I wouldn't go in here and say, okay, well, I'm just gonna do a bar here of color. I'm sorry, and even a different color other than the logo too. But if, say, if I even use a cohesive color, I wouldn't put a bar here like this because, you know, unless you have a bar like this or a similar element to keep it consistent, um, if you did, then it would be okay, but I don't. I have more rounded shapes. So I'm gonna kind of steer clear of that. And I'm gonna go ahead and pull my mark in here and do, you know, do something visually interesting here with this mark that, is going to be cohesive with my brand. Maybe it's like just centering this so that the tip of the 
arrows going right directly up into the, the logo. That's a visually interesting, um, kind of already giving you that direction of focus here. Now just make sure that this is, and I would even probably go down to about 15% on this one, just so that whatever is being printed on top of this is going to be able to be readable. So it has to be very, since it's a bigger image than the one on the business card, you can screen it back a little bit, even less. So I went from 18 to 15% on this. You don't have to worry about putting any type of copy on here. You shouldn't at this point. This is for presentation sake. So the only thing that you should have on here are your elements, consistent elements, your logo, and your contact information. Okay. So that's any questions about that. So here is my business card. Yeah. And here is my letterhead. You can see that they're both consistent, right? For the most part. I mean, this is off center, but that's okay. It's different looking. Well, thank you. All right, the next thing is what? The, the, the uh, envelope, right? Thank you, thank you. Now the envelope, you can have some fun with this. You can actually make this a solid color um, of whatever, you know, color is in your, your, do you have a beige background? No, I don't think so. Like you can make this a solid color of whatever brand mark that you have. But because I'm using this um, mark in the background consistently on all my pieces. Oh, does it? Oh, beige background. On my screen, my, my wallpaper, you mean? I'm trying to figure out what you meant by that, sorry. And once again, I'll scale this up. Uh, let's do 250 maybe instead of 400. Oh, the paper. Yeah, I don't know. I think it's just, let me see if my brightness. There we go. My brightness was turned down. I hurt your eyes now. And you have to be a little bit careful of this, just kind of an FYI. Um, depending on mailing, um, rules and regulations they don't like to have you put anything in print nothing and you know with anything of um, elements on a certain part of the envelope we're just gonna kind of free up the right hand side here if you wanted to do the whole envelope as this green color that's fine because you you could actually order green envelopes and that's that color you wouldn't be actually printing that whole envelope with that green, you would just be ordering green envelopes that match that. But, um, and that would be okay. It's just having printed elements in the way of, you know, where they're gonna be stamping and doing all that good stuff. So that's what that would look like. Now on your envelope, they want the logo and return address. The return address would be your address. So, um, that, you know, obviously we've been placing this on every one of your other pieces. So you just need to grab that and we need to center that with your logo. You can do one of two ways. You can have it centered. This is kind of big, let me change the size here. Let's go down to eight or even less. Let's go to seven, it's probably good. You can um, center this below the logo. Let me put my guides up here so we can see. Looks like I'm gonna need a little bit more space. Yeah, right here. So I'm gonna move this just a little bit too. Just um, make sure you have enough space in between so that the address doesn't look like it's part of the logo. So just enough white space where I see a lot of students that do this really close. Pull it away, have at least, you know, a quarter of an inch space in between. That way you kind of know, and you can even make this bold. 
you know, if you have a typeface family that has different um, options, like for, for uh, making it bold, you do something like that. Or you can actually have it go to the right. Yeah. And I would center it, so I would use the center of your logo, and you can draw margins for this. This would be the center, and you could center this with it on the right-hand side. The only thing I would do is instead of having a centered paragraph, I would have a left justified, just so that it kind of fits a little bit better there. Oh, you know what, let me pull this box up. It's not quite center. Okay, I kind of like it below that. My, my logo is more symmetrical, so I think it works a little bit better. If you have a longer logo too, I don't know, I think it just works better like that for my design. So I'm gonna stick with that. Let me pull over the mark a little bit more. Um, but if you want to, say if you wanna make like the, the envelope that green color, and that's how it would be printed, you would just go ahead and make that color green and that's how it would look so it really would be the color of the paper and kind of what we're pretending it to be Any questions about that? So you can see the consistency between all of these, hopefully. I like it with the logo in it, yeah, me too. But if you have, you know, where you kind of want to show just the paper being changed in color, you could do that too. I could have done that in green, like the whole envelope in green and imported the white logo. And then that way that would have been like, kind of like this example here. I can always make this even a light green, you know, if I wanted to not make it so dark, I could screen that back too. So, you know, things to think about. Pretty cool, pretty cool. So there you go. So when you're done, at this point, you would just save them out as PDF. So go ahead and save out. I would just do smallest file, but just for me to view it. Save, I'm gonna to save to the desktop, export. So that's the letterhead. Yep, exactly, Lenita, yep. You could put your services on the back of the card. You could put a quote, like if you have an inspirational quote on the back of the card, all very cool things. You could talk to your, whoever your target audience is, you know, saying something like, how can I help you? Kind of being like that, where it's, um, you're speaking to them in that way. Um, so yeah, thanks for bringing that. That actually is a great, uh, a great thing to point out. Just give you guys some ideas here. Okay, so I saved all of these out as PDFs. Now I'm going to go ahead. Let me stop sharing here, and I'm going to open them up. So don't forget, you have to double check all of your files before you submit them, just so you know, maybe you missed something that you didn't see until um, until you open it up in PDF. And then that way too, you can see how it looks in a PDF. If anything looks kind of wonky or off, you'll need to uh, change and adjust that. Okay, so here's my PDFs. I'm gonna go ahead and, and this is something you would do if you had a client and you're sending proofs, like PDF proofs. Now you don't want to send PDF proofs, this is just a tip here. When you send a client a PDF proof, you always kind of keep it, let them know and educate them that never look at color. Never look at color as far as like, oh, you know, evaluating and feedback on the color. Just look at the actual design. Let me know if it looks okay. And if you need a color proof, we can get you a color proof. The reason being is PDFs can be very off in color and it really is dependent upon everybody's screen and calibration on their screen. Um, so typically certain shades of blue or green could look different on somebody else's computer. 
So when you show a client a PDF, just say, you know, if you need a, if they're really concerned about the color, like say for instance, they have a Pantone color in their logo that they're sticking to and it looks different on the PDF, just say, hey, you know, just look at this for purposes of design. If you need a color proof, we'll, we'll go ahead and tell the printer to get you a color proof. And a color proof is basically something that you, the client would pay for, but it's extra and they would send the client or send you the proof to send to the client showing what the actual piece would look like in that specific color. Some clients are really picky about that. So I had First Energy was one of my big clients in Ohio when I was uh, working for an advertising agency in Ohio and they had a specific Pantone blue that they use on a lot of their pieces if it wasn't throw away male billing pieces. So um, they wanted a, you know, a color proof in, in certain occasions if they were spending a lot of money on marketing. So some, some places are really, oh, I forgot to change my bullet points, thank you. <laughs> so some people are very picky about that, some clients. All right, so, now that I have all of my PDFs, you guys know how to combine these PDFs. Do you know how to do that? So I have three separate ones. And what I would like to do, good. And for those of you who d don't know, I'll kind of show you here. I don't want to be opening up three separate PDFs from you guys. I don't want you to even have to worry about uploading three separate PDFs. Go ahead and go to your tools in Acrobat. Yours might not be shown. I mean, you, yours probably is very similar to mine. Um, you would just go to combine files and then you would just say add files. And then you're going to go ahead and look for those PDFs that you want to add in there. So it would be your business card, letterhead, envelope. Go ahead and add those. They don't have to be in this order now. And then you just hit combined. And then you're going to save it out as. And um, mind you, my logo looks really pixelated there only because it's a pink file and it's a low res and I'm zoomed in on it here. So just after I assignment four. If you're doing this in Illustrator, so you didn't set this up in Illustrator. Oh, thank you. Then you're going to be using the original logo. So you won't have any type of pixelation only because you're using the original logo. Okay, so um, this is your combined PDF here. Uh, this is all in one PDF has four pages only because I have a front and back of my business card, okay? Now the next thing we need to look at is the PDF PSD mockups. You guys know what PSD mockups are? Most of you guys. I found this site here. I'm going to give you the link. So PSD mockups are things that I never had whenever I was in school and it makes life so much easier because you don't have to mock it up yourself. Yep. Mm-hmm. It's really easy. It's actually very fun to do too, I think. This is a, I'm gonna give you a link here. This is one of the links that I found some good stuff on. Um, just some free PSD stationary mock-up sets that we can use. So what you're gonna do, and I'm gonna provide you a link with these two if you wanna, want options. I did find some that I downloaded. Um, so you're gonna want to, Open these up in Photoshop. So I'm going to open this one up here. I'll show you. Although, oh, the business card the envelope is not going to work on this one. Hold on one second, guys. I thought I had the right envelope size, but it looks like it's not right. Hold on one second here. And of course, it's not gonna work here, okay. I was trying to find a mock-up that, and I know you can't see this, I'm the only one talking to myself looking at this. 
I, I actually downloaded these very quickly thinking that's exactly what I needed and now I go in there, it's done it's what I needed. So let me show you what I'm talking about here. I actually downloaded this because I thought it was kind of cool. The look of it. Um, if you can find something, and I'm gonna dig a little deeper here too, with stationery that's together. The only problem with this one is the size of the envelope. Isn't this, is not a business size envelope. Um, vector images and PSD. It, are they mock-ups? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. We're going to import them and I'll show you how to do it. So minus the envelopes, I'm actually going to get rid of the envelopes here. Let me just show you here real quick. Okay, this is all like layers in here. I just want to get rid of, I'm not going to be able to get rid of that. I thought I was going to be able to get rid of the envelopes, but I can't. See, the envelope sizes are a little different, and that's not going to work. So let me go back to that site, and let's go ahead and take a look and see if there's a better option. Stationary wooden floor. I think that size is a little different to you here. So that's eight and a half. Okay. <laughs> This is actually a very interesting, you just have to make sure you have all the right components here. This one actually might work too. Simple PSD mockup, let's see if this actually downloads. Some of these don't actually download the way that you think they would, so it's a little tricky. Yeah, I didn't post it because I downloaded them earlier today and I get, didn't get a chance to. Um, I wanted to do all that. And, just didn't have time. See, it says it downloaded, but now I don't have it in link here. Hold on. So I have some funky stuff going on here. So you want to up these? Yep. Mm -hmm. So we what we just did was we um, designed the flat files. And now we're going to apply them to our PSD mockup so it looks, you know, real. I'm just trying to find something that's simple. Actually, we could do this one. I'm trying to find something that's simple and it looks neutral. Certain things you can change on PSD mockups, like the background. That was the one that I just downloaded. This one actually doesn't look too bad. Let's do this one here. See if I can. <laughs> I don't think this is it, but let me see. Um, there are also, yeah, this is not it. Um, there are also, uh, in, and I don't know why my Adobe's not opening, a, cre a Creative Cloud, if you go to your um, Adobe Creative Cloud app at the very top of your screen, and I can't get, um, for some reason, I'm having trouble logging in. Um, there are also PSD mockups that you can download there too. I just don't know, and I wouldn't investigate that, but I couldn't log into mine uh, right away to um, check that out. But there are, you know, some free mockups there too. I don't know why this isn't downloading. It's really weird. Okay, so let's go ahead and try something else here. My computer's a little slow. Sorry, guys. Ah, oh, free people. Free PSD mockup. Stationary. Um, stationary. Let's just do that. There's mockup world. I think I was looking up that earlier. Let 
Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. But, you know, go to these sites. There's ones that are free. This one no, just had one on there. I may have to do some digging here. That's what I was hoping to have. And I downloaded a whole bunch, but I didn't realize that envelope wasn't going to work. I thought that would be perfect. Um, I don't want this. Let's zoom out here. Sorry, guys. I thought I was going to have this all ready to go. It's the front back. This might work, but it's that green color. You might be able to change it there. Hmm. Let's try this green one. Sometimes it plays a trick on you where it's like free and then you go to download it. It's not free. So let's see if this actually works. Mm hmm Just takes time to find some. All right, this is downloading. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. I was trying to get this process quicker here for you guys so I could show you how to do this. And it failed miserably. I need some more coffee. All right, so let's go ahead and see what this is all about here. Is this gonna work? Hmm, it's blank. Let me download this again here. <coughs> Bless me. Okay. There might be some in front of it though. Sometimes they put covers. Thank you guys. Sometimes they put like a cover. There we go. Sometimes, let me show you what I just did. So I'm in Photoshop. When I opened this up, all these were hidden. It looked like this. So check out the layers. If that happens to you, turn on your layers. Make sure everything's on and it looks like that. This is the one that I found that opened up looking blank, but it was just because the layers were all being hidden. Yeah. So this one might work. The only thing is, I'm not sure if the business card is the same size, the, the envelope looks a little shorter. Um, and, you know, obviously there's a pencil eraser in here. Yeah, I can give you a link for this one. Let's see how this fits in. It might look a little weird, but let's check this out. Okay, so open up this, you know, drop down this drop down arrow, make sure the little eye is visible. This is where you can kind of change the color in the background. So these are all your, um, smart layers, smart object layers. And so say we want to change the letterhead. Let's go ahead in here. They're all different in how they show. Some of them are highlighted, some are not. This looks like it's the letterhead design here. So what you want to do is find that layer and you could kind of hide the eye just to see. Double click oops, over top of that smart layer, not the name, but the smart layer. It's going to open up a tab and this tab is going to show you what, you know, this is all that the size of your template. And this is where you would import your letterhead. Okay, so you can hide this, delete that layer and put your information in here. So I'm gonna just delete this, I don't need it. And I'm gonna go file place and you could do, I'm gonna say place linked because it's, it won't be as big of a size. And you could just link it up to your um, PDF here. I'm going to find my PDF, place that in here. And I can see already that this mock up is longer than mine. So it's probably, Jesus is eight and a half by 11. Let me see. Once I place. I'll show you what, what the size is. Five by seven. So to make this work, 
this is kind of a weird size for a letterhead. Um, I'm going to see if that actually works here. It's, you know, I'd obviously want this at the top, but when I bring this up, I'm going to lose my image down below. I would basically want it to be like this, but I'm going to lose my image down here. So in that regards, I can adjust it on my, um, my InDesign file. It's just kind of going back to adjusting this so that it is longer. Completely up to you. Um, I would really like to find a, a PSD mock-up that, you know, is the right size. I'm just going to pull this down just to show you how to place it on there just for now. I'm surprised this isn't eight and a half by 11. Okay, so when you're done placing it, go File, Save, and then go back to your, your, uh, your layout file, and you'll see that it's placed in there. Yeah, that's why it's free. Yep. Doesn't look too bad. It's just the top. I would like to have, you know, the logo, you know, at the top a little bit more further up. Actually, it doesn't look that bad. Um, but if you want to, you know, obviously look for something. The envelope may be the same way here because it is, it looks a little shorter. Um, let's go ahead and do that one. Double click on the envelope. Okay, thank you. You can delete the top layer because that's the one that they provided. And then go file, place, linked. And then just place your PDF that you exported of your envelope. Now again, this is gonna be shorter, which may not be too bad because you know obviously you will probably be using different um hold on one second I just saw it I can this where I got this link from or where I got this from okay, let me give it to you here oh sorry I meant to send that to everybody Okay, then hit File, Save, and then go back to your mock-up again, and you'll see it applied to your envelope. Okay, so the next thing would be the business card. Let's see if that's different size too. So this is the back of the business card. No, wait, that's letterhead. That's the front, or the back. This is the back, this is the front. I'm gonna double click. And again, this is, you know, this looks more square, so I may have, an, I may have a problem with this one. This looks more of a shorter um, business card. This is where it might be the big problem here because I do have a longer one. Let's just do this first one and see how that looks. Yes, yeah, it's the top and bottom. Just for sake of showing you this real quick, um, the sizes aren't quite right, so you're going to see some, some spacing, like the gap at the bottom, and then the left side there looks a little different too. Um, but just for the sake of showing you guys how to place these in here, I'm going to try and find something that <laughs> works better here that's more correct to my size. Yeah, see, this is that's not going to work. All right, um, and then you now I would double click over there, and then I would do the one, which this would be, I guess it would be the front if you consider that the front linked. I always say the back. Place, and then I would just place number two. See how there's a space at the top and the bottom? That's because it's not the same size, so you're gonna see it on there, okay? And then if you have one that has, you know, like this one has a little eraser thing, go ahead. You can put the logo in here if you want. All you would have to do is file place. 
the logo ping, maybe the ping file that you guys did, like I said in the last lecture that we had. And I think, let me see here. So I'm just going to place this ping file in, maybe make it a little bit bigger. Oops. Go ahead and save it when you're done and go back to your to your stationery and you can see all of your pieces applied. So I guess the only thing I would say is I probably wouldn't use this one just because the sizes are definitely off. But um, I'm going to have to do some digging here, guys, because it looks like, yeah, I didn't hold you. There's some weird things going on with that, too. Um, let's see. There's this one, but there's, I don't know if the business card, the, the business card looks good. The envelope looks, that's the back of the envelope. Let's see what this looks like. Oh, I have to contribute this to the author here. Some of them you have to, you know, do certain stuff too, but, oh, I think that was ready to download. Nope, that was the same one. Okay. Anybody have any questions about that though, as far as how that how that works? I wonder if we search for something. Blink by blink size PC markers. I'm gonna find some for you guys. I just have to do some digging here. Some of those things, um, kind of a pee in the butt. <laughs> but I will find some. I'm, I'm a good digger, so hopefully uh, I'll find some soon here. Well, that looks really weird. That letterhead is very long. Yeah, there's just different sizes for everything, so you just have to pick one that works. It's a long letterhead for that one. Okay, yeah, and if you guys, you know, find any, let me know. Um, let's see. We can all, you know, share if you, if you see any that you like or have. Uh, this one only has letterheads. You could do separate. It doesn't have to be all together, too. As long as they just kind of go together, it would be, it would be obviously great to have it all together, you know, in one picture. Did I answer your question? Okay, what was your question? You may not have. I'm just trying to find something to use to show you guys. Oh, this, let me see if this works here. And this one. The only thing on this one is it shows the front and the back of the envelope, which isn't bad. You can always, um, you can always delete that and then move your letterhead down. You just hide it if that's something that you want to do. Pencil, pencil and clips, you can change the color. You know, if you say if you wanted to use the color of your brand, you would just change it there. No, not by hand. You're not going to mock these up by hand. You're going to be doing mock ups, um, PSD mock ups, like I'm showing you here. Yeah. Okay, so business card, let's go ahead and 
just look, take a look at this one. Okay, so that's the back. I'm gonna double click on that. Cancel. So I would just delete everything out of here, even the color. So I would just do like a white. And then I would do file place. Let's see if this looks uh, similar to the business card we did here. And I'll put the chat area here out. Oh, there we go. Okay, this looks like it's a little, um, yeah, see this is the problem we're gonna have. I'm gonna push this over just a little bit. We're almost there, just not quite right, but it's almost there, just a little off. But we're gonna go with this one just to get things rolling here. And, and you could, you know, as long as it doesn't look awkward and it looks like it could work for this, definitely do it, you know, I would say go for it. Um, there it is placed in there. See, that doesn't look too bad. That actually looks pretty good. So the next thing is the business card. And I think I did this opposite, but that's okay. Let's go ahead and delete these. What site did you find that one from? Um, Graphberry. Let me give you the link here. Actually, Design Junction, and then it took me to Graphberry. So I'm going to place my business card, but I'm going to place the other side of it. So I'm going to select two. That actually works out good. That's perfect. There we go. I'm going to put stationary markup. And I'm going to give this to you guys too, so you guys have that. Yeah, Adobe has them too. Yeah, I'm sure it's like, I need to link up my Adobe account for some reason. It's not, not working right now. Okay, and it's just one of those things I have to log in and all that good stuff. Pencils, I just want to show you this real quick. See how these pencils are red and blue? We can change that. If you double click on this, save the red one, go ahead and sample your color, and it changes it to that color. Same with the blue. You know, I would do this gray, because it's with my colors. Pretty cool. So that's how easy it is. Okay, letterhead. Let's see if we're getting close in the size here. This is just telling me that, the, that there's um, fonts being used in here that I don't have on my computer, and that's fine, because I'm just deleting their fonts anyway. So if you have that same prompt come up, just cancel, just be like, okay, it's fine. All right, this one does look like it's the same size issues as the other one. Oops. I guess, I don't know, standard letterhead, I would think was eight and a half by 11. Oh, did he? Okay. Must be issues with that. That actually doesn't look too bad. Get rid of this one. There we go. Get rid of all my things here. Oh, this is a folder in here. This is what that is. I was trying to figure out what that was. Okay, so what, what you could do for this mock-up, just hide the folder. You could hide the back of the biz, um, envelope and you can rearrange these. Okay, so what I would do is just go ahead and click on envelope and just kind of rearrange these. So you can kind of put this maybe over here or wherever you want it. And then we can kind of play around with the, the overall um, cropping of this. So now the envelope, let's go ahead and double click on that. You have more power than you think in some of these. 
file place linked and envelope. Let's see here, that's not it. Here's my envelope. Let's go ahead and save. The key is to save it before you go back to the original. Oops. Let's get rid of this one. We're not doing that one. But see how it changed it in there. Now, for this one, because I did pull hide all that stuff, I would just go ahead and crop um, this page. So I would do your crop tool. Where is your crop tool? There we go. I thought it was in there. It was my eyes are going buggy. Go ahead and pull that in so that it makes sense. Double click. Boom. There you go. I'm gonna move the envelope over a little bit. Oh, okay, you sent. Oh, okay, thank you. Does anybody have any questions about that though? Okay, thank you, Tara. Let me open up, let me go back to the chat because I think Christina down, oh, she had a mock up. I'm going to download that. This one, and I'll give to you guys so you guys can play around with it too. And then when you're ready to save this out, you know, you can obviously you want to save it as a PSD file and then export it once you're done saving it as a PSD file. Go ahead and um, do a saved as, and I would just save it as a JPEG for submission. I don't know, maybe a PDF would be better. Yeah, let's do PDF because I think that's part of your, um, it would be a Photoshop PDF, but go ahead and save it as a Photoshop PDF. You can do smallest file size because this is going to be a big file. All um, PSD mockups are usually really big files. So just kind of give you guys a, you're not having a headache <laughs> with some stuff going on there with the uh, submissions at the last minute, especially with this, these huge file sizes because they're big files. Let me open up my, and then just, you know, open up that PDF, make sure it's okay. I'm gonna go ahead and open that up and we can take a look at it here. There we go, so it looks like this. Um, you may wanna make it a little bit of a higher res PDF, not, you know, it's up to you. Let me see how big this file is. Oh, uh-oh. Yeah, exactly. Let me see what that file size is. Oh, it's not too big. So you could probably get away with, let me go back to Photoshop here, because it looks a little grainy. You could probably do Photoshop PDF. Let's save. Okay, so if you did a high quality, let's just see how big of a PDF that is. I'm going to share my desktop so you guys can see everything I'm doing here. Actually, let me... Um, No. Oh, this is it right here. It looks definitely a lot better. And this one is, okay, 13, 13 megabytes. So if that's too big, you, you, you guys know how to change the resolution as a PDF? Because this actually looks a lot better. Let me open up the low res one. This is the low res, so let me zoom in here. 125, you can see it's pixelated. 
125, it's much sharper. See that difference right there? So if you wanted to, if it's too, too big, when you go to save as, sorry, I, I know people are typing in the chat and I'm not catching up here, so give me one second. Go ahead and change like the high quality settings. You would just go to the compression and you would just downsize this. So you would say like instead of 450, maybe do like 250 and 180. Or it would actually be based on the pixels per inch down sampling here and then this number would change. And what that would do is still give you that sharpness, but it won't be as big of a file. Just make sure you kind of reset that because that'll always come up. <laughs> so I was just saying when you, when you save as a PDF here, you, if it's too big, you know, as a high quality file, go to your compression. And before this was set at 380, oh, sorry, this was, this was, this was 300 and 450, just downsize this to like 180. Just make sure you go back and take this back up to 300. And that the, the file size won't be as big, but it'll be sharper for your PDF. And then when you're done, you still have, oh, I didn't log out of by accident. Wait one second. Oops. Yeah, I'm just clicking on the wrong things tonight here. I'm very clicky today. Just click in really quick and not even looking twice. All right. So the last part of this is to save it on as your, um, you know, onto your Behance site. Remember, we needed to do that last step here. So what you would do is just go back to your pieces. So I would go back to um, InDesign, sorry. And save these out. You know, I'm almost wondering, I can export each one of these out as JPEGs. Yeah, so this would be business card JPEG. This looks good. Export business card JPEG. All pages. And letterhead export. So I'm in oops, InDesign and I'm just exporting these out. And then what you'll want to do too is go back to Photoshop and export this out too as a JPEG. Because you're gonna, that's the only file format that is ex accepted through um, Behance. Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep, you got it. All right, let me open up my B hands. You guys all pretty know, pretty much know how to do this because you've been doing this probably in other classes. But if you don't have a B hands site, go ahead and, oh, I'm not even signed in. That's probably what my Adobe is having issues with. I probably accidentally signed out. Let me sign in here, guys, hold on. My battery is dying. I'm gonna to have to plug my computer in too here. Not what I just mean is I need to Um you don't have to. I would recommend it to be designed in um in InDesign. First, uh, for your layouts. It's always good to just get into that habit. Oh, okay, hold on one second, guys. I got to uh, sign back out. I signed, I signed in the wrong way here, hold on. <laughs> Let me plug my computer in so I don't lose you guys too.
My computer's working double time here. Triple, triple time. Let me sign out here. Sorry guys, you can't see what I'm doing. I'm just logging in, trying to log into my Behance, but I have a couple e different emails here that I obviously have that are screwing me up. I have two. Okay. Asking me to verify my login here. All the fun stuff going on. All right. I finally am in. So I exported those out and let me show you how I would submit these all in my Behance. Two hours. Yeah. So I think we started at 9.30. So it would be yeah, we're coming up to it here. Okay, so we're gonna create a project. We'll be done at 11.30 if you're Eastern time. We're almost done here. This is the last bit. So go ahead and upload files, and then you're just gonna find those JPEGs that you submitted or exported out. So I'm gonna go ahead and go on my, see these all look very low res here. I might have to change that. That's the only problem here. Last three hours. Jeez. Okay, let me grab these JPEGs here. And then stationary right here. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, whatever works for you. Hey, that came out nice. Look, that last presentation. The only, if these look a little pixelated, you might have to save them out as higher res uh, JPEGs. Mine are just a little small, so it's hard to see. And then you just click save or continue. Yep, that's true. <laughs> you can name this our class name and you can name this your brand identity or just an identity system. And then you can put your title, April Biss uh, Studio, Design Studio. Crop and continue. Choose your creative fields. So for this, it would be obviously craft design, logo design. I don't even know if there's a, a category for that. No, there isn't. Looks like it's just graphic design. And exactly, yep, maybe typography and creative direction. We'll just do that, done. And then tools used, of course we use a lot, right? I'm just gonna put the Adobe Creative Suite, short and sweet. And then hit publish when you're done or save, depending on what steps that you wanna do. And when you go to the beginning of your project here, I might, see business cards are really small. You should see your thumbnail come up where you can click on it. Um, there's also this little cog wheel where you can edit it. Say so if you need to do edits, clone it, promote. The promote page is where you'll find the link that you're actually gonna copy and paste into your email that you're going to send to your FPA and you're going to CC me on that. So I can view your wonderful work. If you need to unpublish or delete, you could do so here. And like Christina always says, I always delete my work. If I didn't, I'd have a whole bunch of stuff in here <laughs> just piled up. Branding, yep, that's a good one. Mm -hmm. Any questions about that? It's pretty. Oh, thanks. Oh, you like this? This is a book cover I did for an author. 
recently. Yeah, he's a, uh, he just came out with a new book here. It's kind of cool. These are Chicken in Heaven. I actually did another book for him. Book cover here many, many years ago. It's kind of cool. Kind of cool to see your work actually published, you know? No, yeah, but gosh, I love doing book cover design. I love doing any type of publication work too. Branding, like logos and branding, as well as publication work. That's like, that's what gets me excited. <laughs> so, all right, no questions as far as any of that is concerned. Do you want me to go over anything else or is everybody pretty clear on what they need to do for this? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we let's open it up to you guys. Um, this is the uh, this is you guys only have a few like a fifteen minutes here to kind of show your work here. Let me stop sharing and unmute. Manita, you want to go? Go ahead. Yeah, how do I show up? Okay, so you should have a share button maybe at the top. Okay. It's like a green share button. I'm just going to get your opinion on this. This is like the layout I got. I didn't get the logos done. But I was just wondering, um, like, if this would be an okay design to kind of do like on the business card and stuff like for the identity or if it would because in one of the videos i watched from the lynda.com and it said not to use lines because when it prints it might print it crooked okay so i think just to clarify what you're saying you wanted to use these vertical and horizontal lines in your stationery yeah okay um, it's depending upon how close it is to your trim lines. So if it's super close, say you have like a quarter of an inch of white space and then you have a border, it might look kind of, depending on the web, you know, if it prints and it shifts on the web uh, press, it might look uneven. So you might want to, that's why you kind of want to steer clear of any borders or any type of a solid border that would go to the trim line and it's just like a bar color. I don't think this would be a problem because it looks like it looks like you have enough space of white space before the lines start. So I don't think this, you know, if you kept it like the spacing of that, I don't think you would have an issue. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. And then I was just gonna ask you about this. Okay. Um, on this one, then, do you think, what do you think about making like the L and the J, like the different thi different thicknesses a little bit? No, I actually like it the way it is. I think it's perfect. What you could do is you could do the lines would be uh, a darker purple and then the Lanita design would be a different color, like a, like a gray, you know, mm -hmm. so you could offset that. But yeah, I wouldn't change the thickness at all. I think it looks really good how it is. Okay. Um, I think the line work is very visually interesting. I like the spacing of it out. I like how it's framing the name. If you made it thick, it would be unbalanced. It's not, you know, it wouldn't be as balanced as it looks now. I was thinking maybe thicker in some areas, like how kind of how this. Oh, okay. So you want to change the width of the line. That, that would be fine. I would definitely play around with that. You, you use your width tool, maybe make some line, like the top of that L where it kind of wisps up, maybe thinner, and then it goes to thicker. Yeah. That would be something that you could do. And then w would it be better to do the, the lines, like the outside, these lines, a lighter color so that this stands out, or would it matter? It's all what you want to see first. So what's more important? Because you have a smaller name set inside, 
I would probably go with a darker color for the name and a lighter, not a super light hue, but something that's lighter in hue. So maybe like that purple that you showed on that your presentation slide and then either have the black name in black or a darker gray or something like that. Yeah, I was almost thinking about changing those colors. So maybe like, I'm still trying to decide if I should do this like a, more like a blue, dusty blue, and this like a purplish gray. I'm still trying to decide, but what do you Okay, do? well do, do a whole bunch with the different colors and see what you think. That's what I would always do. Like go ahead and place like 10 logos of that logo and just play around with the, the color, you know, how it would work. Um, your color harmonies and see what you think looks the best. Okay. Yep. Good job though. I think your logo mark is very strong and just playing around with those widths of the lines could push it forward more a little bit. Um, just don't go too crazy. Don't make it too, too thick in certain areas. You know, you want to keep it delicate and light too. Um, that's kind of what makes this logo work. So, um, you know, those end pieces, for example, you know, where the end could be sharper and thinner mm -hmm. to make it look more elegant and, um, you know, correspond with, with the typeface that you chose, like you were talking about. <laughs> Jeez, though, Christine is saying, keep it simple, but we're not stupid. <laughs> we're not stupid. Yeah, it's actually, that is actually just my um, signature that I do at work because we have to initial things sometimes. Yeah, that's great. And that, that's even better because that's a part of you. So that's wonderful. Yep. Good job. Thanks. Yeah, that's it. Um, what I need to do. Right. Yeah, thanks for sharing your, your work. Good job. I'm excited to see where it goes. You're welcome. Thank you, Lanita. All right. So who else is next? So we all can learn from each other. So that's great. Lanita has a you know, great, um, great elements coming together and uh, we can all see kind of the changes that need to be made and we can all learn from each other. Go ahead, Tabra, you want to share yours? I'm going to stop sharing and then I'm going to, you might need to unmute yourself. Yeah. <clears throat> Hello. Hello. Go ahead. You can, did you share your screen? Gotcha. I was almost there. I had to find Sorry. Figure out where my brain was. <laughs> I hear you. This is the design I decided to go with. Okay. I know you said my other one was stronger, but I didn't like the way that the letters interacted. They kind of were hard to read. But, um... Yeah, I'm looking forward to putting this on stationery and such. And I've already got my black and white and my grayscale. And and I thanked you for um, showing the color thing. Yeah, but, uh, color, yeah. Okay. In that heart. Just kidding. <laughs> I couldn't figure out how to make fire. And that would be a good idea. You can find simple, like, fire icons that you can have live trace or not live trace trace traced in illustrator um that would be simple but kind of like a flame yeah i would just take out the bgg i think it looks a little off-centered and kind of out of place just keep the name and i would make burning grace larger in size so that it it's more emphasized than graphics and I would make the cross smaller so it's more balanced with the name. Because right now, if you were to put this on, say, like stationary, like an envelope, you wouldn't be able to see. It would be hard to see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I gotcha. Oh, Christina, if you've got something you can send me, I would appreciate it. There you Just go. Use as many, as, blah, as many pointers as possible. Because I actually came up with this design years ago and I love to have the opportunity to use it. Mm -hmm. So. Um. Okay, so just balancing that out. See if you could push that mark a little bit more, you know, to where it's maybe a little bit more refined, if you can. 
I don't mind that it's simple, but see if you can maybe get that connection with your name. The burning grace would be kind of cool. I'm not sure if the fire on the cross, is that a good connotation to have? I'm not quite well, sure. Actually, actually my, um, burning grace is actually the meaning of my first two names. Oh, okay. That but you know what I'm talking about with the burning of the cross? I don't know if that's like a, if that would be a bad thing or a good thing. <laughs> I don't know. Think of, think about that. Yeah. The connotations um, of that. Because uh, Tabra means burning and Anne means grace. Okay. So, I love that. It's beautiful. Thank you. I would just watch what you do with the cross. I just don't want anybody to see it and be like, okay, what is this all about? Get bad negative connotations from it. That's all I'm kind of saying. So you might be safe with just using the heart and not the fire flame. You know, just really kind of research that and think about that. Yeah, I don't mind the name being that, but maybe the, the actual visual doesn't have to be that literal. Yeah, because burning a cross is a really bad thing. Right. <laughs> I really don't want to put that on there. Yeah, so sometimes we have to think about, okay, how is that going to come across? So I think maybe sticking with this would probably be the best. Unless you just didn't use the cross and you used a big burning flame, that's another, you know option yeah i don't know but i'll play around with it and see yeah i'll play around with it over the next two days okay yeah lenita is asking who your target audience is yeah um well i live in nebraska and kind of in a bible belt type area my target audience is um just businesses in this area, in my in the surrounding counties, mm -hmm. um, and uh, so maybe more of your target audiences would be organizations, churches, groups of that nature. Right. Yeah, I get that, but don't limit yourself either. Just because yeah. you know, um, so you know, just kind of think about that. Well, I wrote about that in my writing thing that. You know, I don't want to limit myself. Exactly. Yeah. And just having a target audience, you know, a lot of people think, oh, well, that's, that's the only people that I'm speaking to. And that's just not the case. You are speaking to other people too. It's just who you're, you're, you know, focusing on who you know is going to be using your services or buying your products. Right. Right. Yep. Good job. Well, All right. So play around with that. See what you can come up with. And I would always, I would keep it down to like maybe two colors. Right here, I see like one, two, three, four colors. I'm getting rid of the green. Okay. I'm going to say you might want to keep it a little more simple. And I've and got the red and brown and then the black. Okay. And you said two colors other than black and white, or along with black and white. Yeah, like I would, um, yeah. I would delete this right now, but it's. Yep. So go ahead and play with that and see what you can, can come up with. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Good job. All right. You guys sound like you're getting tired here. Does anybody else want to show their work? Christina, you got anything good? Well, I'm sure you've got something good. I don't doubt that. And Christina, I don't know if I downloaded that mock-up here. It's not, let's see here. I can download that again. I think I missed it. Oh, okay, I got it. I got it. I got it. Christina, I just lost the. Never mind. I found what I lost, or what I thought I lost. I found out my mind, which I thought I lost. Sheesh. <laughs> well, thank you for all the teaching, April. I really enjoyed. Awesome, you guys. I mean, I it's great to I see them. Like I think Christina's been in my class the past three months. And Tabra, were you, I had you, didn't I, in one class before this? Nope. I haven't. Geez, so the name sounds so familiar. I don't know why. But you're welcome. Yep. Aw. Yeah, I'm actually really tired. <laughs> it's 1130 here, uh, my time, my Eastern, Eastern Standard Time, I want to say my time. But yeah, it's getting late. Thank you guys for being so flexible. Now you guys can enjoy your day off tomorrow, hopefully, 4th of July. Does anybody have some big plans? 
Yep. Sounds good, Christina. Thanks, Christina. Yeah, well, have fun. No, just fireworks. Okay, good. Well, have fun with whatever. It's supposed to rain here, so that's the only bummer, but, you know, whatever. We'll figure out something. Even if we have to throw bang snaps in the parking lot, we'll do that. <laughs> okay, well, y'all have... Right, guys. You guys have a wonderful night and 4th of July. I'll see you guys on the boards. This is... I'm going to post my links to keep in touch with me to announcements as well, but... You know, hopefully we'll uh, finish strong here. I can't wait to see all of your projects. Thank you. All right, good night, guys. Thank you for a great class. Yes, thank you. All right, thank you so much. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thanks, guys.